Hi, today is June 8th, 2024, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 884 for the year. Fuck you, H. Mart. With fewer than two months left of living here to go, I see the H as I'm biking home, and I think, are they really going to put an H Mart right there? And as I get closer, I see that they are, just in time for me to maybe shop there once before I move. Although, maybe I'll be like, fuck you, H Mart, I've lived here without you for almost two years, and I'll live in Murray Hill without you too. But then I was like, wait, maybe there's an H Mart in Murray Hill. There's a Trader Joe's and a Fairway, just like there is here. So maybe there's an H Mart. So I checked, and there isn't an H Mart in Murray Hill, or Kipps Bay, or Turtlefuck, or whatever that neighborhood is called. So I was right the first time. Fuck you, H Mart. Poem number 885, Buyers Rejoice. I was on Street Easy yesterday, giving myself the opposite of buyer's remorse. Buyer's rejoice, I guess. I looked at this apartment and that apartment. I clicked on the ones that looked better than mine, thinking to myself, why didn't I buy this one or that one or that one? And I looked at each one and I was like, oh yeah, the maintenance on that motherfucker is crazy. Or I remember that one. It didn't look as good in person as it does in the picture. Or I saw like six or seven ne'er-do-wells milling around the general vicinity of the building while I was waiting for the broker. I rejected that apartment before I even looked at it. Shitty fucking block. And so on. Not once did I ask myself, why didn't I go for that place and not have an answer? And when I was done with speaky, spe and when I was done with Street Easy, I was filled with buyer's rejoice. Poem number 886, Spleech. 37 hours till I give my speech, she said, using Winchester Chimes' word for speech. I told her I had a trick for public speaking. I told her that that trick about imagining everyone naked is bullshit. What you have to do is imagine that everyone is covered in mud, I told her. I tried, I've tried many different approaches over the years. I've tried vomit, shit, piss, blood, cum, candy floss, carrots, onions, and celery. I've tried imagining everyone in a big pot of soup, cement, water, wood, pine needles, needles, netting, necklaces, electrical tape, cardboard, insects, saran wrap, cellophane, flowers, diamonds, pearls, paint, pumpkins, kumquats, typography, existentialism, and a government that truly serves its people, I told her, and mud is the only one that works. I don't know if what I told her was helpful, and I don't know if she will take my advice, but I am certain that regardless, she will give a great speech. Poem number 887, One Way to Waste Time. One way to waste time is after you write a poem and you realize you left out Venezuelan beaver cheese, you spend a stupid amount of time figuring out how to put it in the poem. You study each line carefully and try to imagine Venezuelan beaver cheese after piss or cement or cardboard, but none of those seem to work. You realize you could have put it after kumquats, but then you'd need another word after existentialism. Sometimes this shit is trickier than it seems, and sometimes it's easier. You lazily settle on first thought, best thought, and move on to the next poem. You also regret that you didn't put semen after cement, but you already had cum. You already had cum all over yourself. Nothing left to do but to clean up your mess. Poem number 888, another way to waste time. Another way to waste time is to write poems. Every day, write poems. 888 poems this year so far. What a fucking waste of time. Where does that motherfucker find all that time to waste writing poems, you might ask? Sometimes I wonder that myself. But this morning I woke up wondering what I will do when I no longer have a job. Volunteer work? Maybe. But maybe I'll try to write a novel. If you think these poems are a waste of time, wait until I start writing my novel. Poem number 889, Silly Shit. Yesterday I was amused to learn two things. That one friend of mine had written a speech called Fear of Public Speaking. And that another friend had written a story about a one-legged ice skater. By amused, what I really mean is that I thought I could have written that speech or that story. That, that is just the kind of silly shit that I like to come up with. By amused, what I really mean is that I thought I could have written that speech or that story. I'm going to start again. Poem number 889, silly shit. This is so stupid. Why am I starting again? Poem number 889, Silly Shit. Yesterday I was amused to learn two things, that one friend of mine had written a speech called Fear of Public Speaking, and that another friend had written a story about a one-legged ice skater. By amused, what I really mean is that I thought I could have written that speech or that story. 
That is just the kind of silly shit that I like to come up with. Maybe I will come up with some silly shit tomorrow, but probably not today, as today's poems are almost done. And the last poem of the day, poem number 890, Silly String. As she gave her speech, she imagined the audience was covered in silly string that turned into snakes, that turned into spaghetti, that turned into linguini, that turned into spumoni, that turned into asti spumanti, that turned into a Maserati, that turned into a Fiat, that turned into a Ferrari, that turned into Geraldine Ferraro, who was giving a speech accepting the nomination for vice president at the 1984 Democratic National Convention while imagining that the audience was covered in silly string. One might suppose that all of these imaginings would have caused her to lose her concentration, but Geraldine Ferraro got through her speech just fine. All right, that's it. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I'm sorry if I wasted your time.